Welcome everybody to the Chappaqua Library. My name is Joan Kuhn and I'm the program coordinator. And today I have what Penguin Random said, I have here in front of me, a Jewish mother, a reluctant atheist and an ardent environmentalist. And her name is Annabelle Gerwich. So nice to see you, Annabelle, and thank you for coming. Um, oh, Joan, I, Joan, I'm so happy to be doing the event with Chappaqua and Scarsdale and Books Yaya. Uh, you know, I think anyone who's anywhere near uh, my age is going to relate to this idea of juggling identities. Uh, when you get to a place in life where uh, this book starts, where um, post-divorce, my parents had passed, my kid had left the house. So all these roles had fallen away, you know, right. um, wife, daily motherhood, uh, being a daughter. So then the question was, who am I? And all these questions are in my um, comedic essays in my new book. Yes, which we are going to encourage everybody in the audience now to remember it is March 22nd, which is a Monday at seven o'clock. Uh, please go to the uh, website, Chappaqua Library website, which is chappaqualibrary.org and just scroll down and you'll see the program and please register because this is going to be a lot of fun, this program. Um, in case you don't know anything about Annabelle, she is a New York Times bestselling author. She is also a comedic actress and a television host that many of you probably recognize. And when I just spoke to somebody, they said, that's where I knew her from. She was a hostess on Dinner and a Movie, and that was on TBS. So I hope, I'm sorry I keep moving my mask, but it's getting uncomfortable. Oh, this I'm in is, the library. This is, uh, this is so, COVID, you know. This is uh, COVID. Joan, you have a mask on. I've got a uh, construction uh, next door. Yes. <laughs> we were all doing the best we can. But one of the you know advantages of this moment is that we get to have a conversation with a friend of mine, Faith Saley, who is the author of Approval Junkie and also is a correspondent for um, uh, uh, CBS yes. Sunday Morning. And she's on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And uh, Faith and I are old buddies. And I'm so excited to get to uh, be together with her, which we may not be able to do if it weren't for being on yes. Zoom. And we're gonna be conversing uh, at the event together and everybody's gonna love Faith if you don't know her already. Well, we all love you already because I've met you a couple of times now on Zoom and you're just a wonderful person and so creative and so wonderful. You know, you've written so many other books and won awards for them. This is not your first venture into uh, writing. No, so this is a New York Times and New yeah. Yorker magazine. You're all over the place. Well, this is not my, my first time at the rodeo, as we right. say. You know, I think many people will relate to my story. I'm a reinventor. I had many years as a career as an actress. And then I started writing when I was hired by NPR to be a commentator. And that really changed my life. You know, I am that NPR junkie. Um, mm -hmm. And so getting to work in that environment and write essays that uh, what I did at NPR and what I continue to do in my work is, you know, Joan, I don't think I'm that interesting. Honestly, I feel oh. like all the things that happen in my life uh, are things that everybody goes through. Like one of the essays in the new book is about what happens when uh, your parents pass and you find yourself in that stage of life where suddenly your house is full of the stuff of many generations. I'm the elder in my family now. Yeah. I can't even believe it. I'm the one that has all the pictures of family members that we don't even recognize anymore. I've got the stuff left over from my life as a, as a married person. I have a thousand and one baseball uniforms from my <laughs> kids' years growing up. And then one of the things I didn't expect was when my parents passed, I inherited all the letters I sent to them, oh, which you. only proved what a terrible daughter I was. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's this moment where 
as I call us, we're generation stuff. I, my house is sort of like one of those pie charts that we all had when we were studying science, the sediment layers of the earth. And, you know, how we live and negotiate life when we have uh, a lot of memories behind us and a lot of Waterford crystal bowls left over <laughs> from our wedding gifts. And I think people will, you know, relate to that. And uh, it's been it's been just great so far. Um, the book has been a, a Good Morning America pick. It's been featured on NPR and uh, and getting a, a lot of press. And it's so gratifying because as a writer, you know, uh, I sit in a room alone and the desire is to connect. I mean, we all write, all of us writers, I think, are it's about that connection with the reader. So what's really fun about an event like we're going to be doing is we get to take questions from our audience. And that's my favorite part is mm -hmm. to talk about the writing. And hopefully some of you will already have gotten the book. And then we can have a dialogue about what you related to and, and what things are are you going through at this point? Um, and, you know, one of the things I do in this book is the last essay in the book brings us up through COVID. And it's, you know, I like to think that the theme of the book, I mean, they're all comedic essays about very serious mm -hmm. issues. But one of the themes is about kindness and the kindness of strangers and how I worried that I was going to become Blanche Dubois at this point in my life, you know, unmarried, alone, depending, as Tennessee Williams wrote, on the kindness of strangers, as he wrote in Streetcar Named Desire. And one thing I have experienced, and, and I hope others have noticed this too, that as fracturous as the time it's been during COVID, I think there's also been an outpouring of empathy and kindness. And that's one of the themes of this book is about cultivating kindness and celebrating kindness. So amongst the humor, um, I'm going to be interested in hearing about kindness from our, our listeners and our watchers as well. And for those of you who don't know, but read the New York Times, go back to the last Tuesday section. Uh, Annabelle was interviewed in the New York Times about COVID. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that interview? Yes, um, uh, if you look up the uh, fantastic columnist, Tara Parker Pope, who founded the Well Column, oh. I was included in, a, in an essay she's written about disenfranchised grief during the pandemic. And I think uh, anyone who reads that piece will relate and feel affirmed. It's been such a challenging time for everyone. And and um, and that's one thing that Tara is reflecting in that column. And I was felt really honored to be included and just tell a little bit of my story and a little bit about the book. And that's in the New York Times and Tara Parker Pope's column about yeah. disenfranchised grief. And if you want to hear more, there's more interesting things about Annabelle. She's the most resilient and adaptable person here right now. And I applaud you for everything that you have accomplished in these last few years. I so appreciate that, Joan. You know, when you say I'm resilient, uh, that's one of the things I, I make fun of in the book. I mean, I think we have to be resilient. We have to be adaptable, but it doesn't come easily. And so no, it doesn't. I, I, that's one thing I write about in the book is about the, the, uh, the unexpected uh, adventures and journeys that it takes to become resilient in our society. Excellent, excellent. I'm sure all of you will look forward to it and I encourage all of you to please join us on March 22nd at seven o'clock and go to our website to um, register for the program, which is chappaqualibrary.org. So uh, thank you, um, Annabelle. Look forward to seeing you into meeting um, Faith and uh, this will be a wonderful time for everybody, a real upper, which is something we really need right now. Don't we though? Uh, thank you, Joan. I'll see you on the 22nd. 22nd at seven o'clock. Thank you again. <laughs>